Hey guys, welcome back to another video gunner come in. Today we are back in the workshop again. And today we're gonna try to get this old craftsman to mow, which you can't see right now, but that's because we're working on the deck. So I was servicing the deck, you know, made sure the spindles and everything moved freely and the idler pulleys did. Uh, idler pulleys moved free, but the spindles did not. So I took the uh, I took the blade and shafts out and well here's what one of the bearings looked like. That's the bottom bearing right above the blade. And let me show you the super awesome other bearing. It's somewhere over here. Oh, and here's what the other bearing looked like. Yeah, that's what the other one looked like. <laughs> Not a bearing at all. And you might be like, well, where's the inner, the inner part of the bearing? Stuck on the blade. W40's been sitting on it for a while, so I'm gonna try to get it off. In fact, that's what I'm gonna do first. Well, my phone ran out of space. in which was fine anyway because my parents were hanging out outside and i wasn't gonna sit here and try to do this video while my dad was commenting and making sarcastic jokes about every single thing i was doing because that's what he does every time i record around him you didn't hear me just then that's what he does every time i record when i'm around him because he thinks he's so funny <laughs> anyway um but anyway, it was fun because I got the deck on, um, I sharpened the blades, I put new bearings in the spindles, because, uh, did I even, yeah, I did mention that when, in the beginning clip. But yeah, I put the new bearings in the spindles, I put the blades on, and before I did that, I sharpened them pretty good. They've got a, they've got pretty sharp edge now. And then I got the deck on, and I was going to be like, and I was literally ready to test to see if it was mo if it was gonna mow can't talk but then i tried to engage the pto and found out that well it wasn't moving it would get to about like right there and then it would just stop and no matter how hard you pulled on it it wasn't gonna move so i took that pto engagement cable out and that thing is seized up tighter than an engine that had no oil in it so so i was like well i don't have another pto engagement cable i tried the one that was out of that mower but it's too short because it has a different way of engaging the pto so i was like well what am i gonna do and then i was and then i thought and i was like I came up with a really whack idea, and I was like, well, maybe I can get baling wire and hook up, like, a pulley system to, um, to engage the PTO, but, well, then I, you know, got my common sense back and was like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I have a bucket that's literally full of these pulleys. I don't even know why. They were already here. <laughs> they, it's just full of those pulleys. I don't know what the previous owner was doing with so many pulleys. But anyway, I've literally never used them in my life until almost just now. So I was like, well, is there a different way I can do it? But then I was like, well, why don't I just eliminate the pulleys and make a straight line with bailing wire straight from there to the PTO? Granted... It's going to be a pain in the keister to try to engage that PTO when that bailing wire is rubbing up against everything that is trying to go through. But with some uh with some grease, I think it'll be possible. So, I'm trying to currently I've I've almost got it to the point where I'm just going to hook it up to the idler pulley, but I've got to get the um I got to get those 
bolted back on because I had this out to make it easier to hook my bailing wire up. Well, great. All, that freaking bailing wire is already hanging up against crap. <laughs> all right. I got the line running straight down. Coming out there, going around there, and I grease that up straight to that idler pulley. And I put it through the hole that the uh, that, that quick pin would normally go through. So, now we just got to see, you know, true test to see if that's going to engage. Uh-oh. Hmm. That bailing wire just came straight off. I'd like to see it come off now. Only place where it might come off is where I had to add an addition to the wire down here. But I twisted it pretty good, so... Now we gotta... Try to test it again, and you'll probably find something else that's going to break. Let me just make sure that all's good down there. All right. Yeah, try this again. <laughs> it is straight up just, it ain't going to move. In fact, it's picking up the deck. Yeah, it can't, it can't move around that. I was thinking what else I could use. And I thought of something that is a lot more flexible and won't bind near as much on anything that it rubs against. And, but probably harder to work with. String. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, I got scared there for a second. This stuff here. I'll probably have to put like two, two um, like rounds of it, you know, because if, if I just do one round, it'll probably break. So I'll do two to reinforce it a little bit. And the good thing is that a, po a positive about this string is that when you put grease around where it's rubbing against, it'll soak up the grease. And that'll make it even more effective. So, all right, I got it all stringed up and tested. And not tested, that's what we're about to do. So, let's do that. It's the next day, and, uh, well, I was about to give up, because, <laughs> frankly, I was done messing with that PTO. Uh, I was about to just go buy a new PTO, PTO cable, but then I was like, you know what? Who's, whoever said it needed to hook up to that PTO cable? So, or PTO handle, I mean. Whoever said it needed to hook up to that? So... This is my solution. These vice grips are holding this bailing wire, which is going straight to the idler pulley. So, when you want to mow, you get off, put the parking brake in so it don't die when you get off the seat. You come back here, pull that bailing wire, take your vice grips, lock that bailing wire in the engaged position, Sit back in your seat, mow. And I test it out and it's working. Now it's gonna be different. It's gonna be different when I actually try to mow with it because 
when you, it's probably going to hurt when you try to engage it, because when you pull on that, when you pull on that bailing wire, you know, that, when that belt starts running and it, and it puts all that tension in, it's like jerking on that idler pulley and that idler pulley is jerking on that bailing wire and you're freaking just sitting there. It's like, it feels like it's about to rip through your hand. Yeah, that's probably going to hurt, but do it fast. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's just go try it. All right, I'm going to try it on idling. See what it's going to do. course you know you know movie studios i know none of y'all are watching but if y'all are don't ever hire me as a cameraman because a phone died literally right as i was about to mow but i will tell y'all it mowed it didn't mow bad it did decent pretty good even with the freaking almost worn in half blades and i did sharpen them but sometimes that don't even save them um but you know the motor got hot because a flaw in my hood it didn't have any vent holes so you know when all that heat that's coming off of that engine tries to get out it can because there's no there's no vent holes in the hood so it just it just gets trapped in there and that motor gets hot hot and so i was like all right i need to cut out some vent holes so just 30 minutes ago i was trying to do that and i did it while the hood was on the mower and i know y'all are already thinking uh no that's the dumbest thing i've ever heard of someone doing well you know, I thought, you know, with my dumb self, you know, I was like, well, uh, I'll put that metal plate over the motor so all the sparks and the flames and stuff won't hit the motor. Oh, but, you know, I didn't think that, you know, that plate's going to get hot, too, and it's probably going to melt the uh, cover on the motor. And that's exactly what it did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It didn't melt anything else that bad but that uh that grass screen mm -hmm, showed in and i was like i hate myself you know you won't believe how many dumb things i've done similar to that you know just me not thinking straight and then i do something and then <laughs> And I figure out how stupid it was immediately after I do it. But not before. It's never before. But anyway. So I was like, well, I can't run the motor with it like that. Because it's not going to be able to get sufficient air through it. And it's just going to overheat the motor anyway. <laughs> and, I, and, you know, you might say, well, why don't you just take the grass screen off? Well, then you're going to get a bunch of grass and stuff clogging up the fins on the head and everything so so i was like well what am i gonna do because i really don't want to buy one so what am i gonna do and i was like well i'm you know i might be able to cut out new holes cut you know just cut some holes out in it to save it 
So that's what I tried to do. I got this, this little picker thing, and I got that blowtorch, and I just got it on just a little bit and heated it up, and even then it still melted it a little bit. Well, this is like freaking chrome, so good old Chinese tools. But anyway, um, I heated it up till it was glowing, glowing super bright. I stuck it in there and I melted out some new holes. So I made some new holes. They're all here. I didn't really get any out here because my dad explicitly told me that I better not ever drain the uh, acetylene and oxygen out of his tanks. So, and just from making those holes, those had to be on for like, a good 10 minutes because I just kept it going uh, while I was doing that that way I could you know go back and forth between heat between heating up that tool and cutting it and plus I had to use all the oxygen settling that was required to cut out the vent holes so so now what I'm gonna do is I gotta wait for that to cool down the heat that was radiating off of that was insane so i gotta wait for that to cool and i'll put it back on and we'll see how the motor performs and um and i'm gonna do a few other things i still gotta i still gotta i'm gonna use bailing wire to just to be able to pick this up pick this side up because the rod is missing for that so i'm just gonna use a few rounds of bailing wire and tighten them up and do that until it raises that up because this side hangs lower obviously so and i gotta adjust the wheels on the uh, deck one of them is higher than the other why would someone do that i don't know but but i gotta adjust those and then i gotta put the chute back on and well i think that'll be it so well here it is all finished just gotta air the tires up but so i put a lot of rounds down here um put some on the bottom and i put these up on the top on the upper so it can hold it up better when it's lowered um see it's loose right now but when it gets lowered it'll tighten up and then that'll be loose so that's why i put both and Yep, got the vents, of course, with the super good condition grass screen. <laughs> and, yep, and got the chute back on. Oh, shoot. It's the chute. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah. I like how that's, like, barely lined up with that. But... Let me get the tires aired up, and we'll try to go mow again. All right, tires are aired up. Let's go mow all the tall grass that don't exist because we live in northern Texas in 100-degree heat every single day. All right. <laughs>
guy's pretty good. It's a pretty good little mower. Real good mower. Old engine and it's still, still kicking good. Um, I found out, <laughs> I found out that actually the first two digits, I don't, I don't know, I really thought it was the last two digits, but apparently it's the first two digits on the valve cover that tell the year the mower was made. And since that's the case, that motor was actually made in 2001. 2001. Yeah. 2001. And that would be like January the 9th because it says 010109. So it's 2001, January the 9th that this mower, motor was made. 2001, 22-year-old motor and... All I had to do was fix a carburetor, and here it is, cutting grass like a champ again. It's crazy. And I, d you can notice that one side of the deck cuts higher than the other side because it leaves these little raised strips of grass. But I kind of like the way it makes the yard look. It, you know, everybody, you know, I keep seeing this ad that says, "Are are you ready for mow day?" Who's going to make the best stripes? Well, I literally made stripes. <laughs> stripes of slightly taller grass. So, I think I've got the best stripes. <laughs> it's, yeah, literal stripes in my yard. But, uh, yeah, I think I, it turned out really well. It's a good mower. And it didn't really get hot. I didn't see any... because. How I knew it got hot the first time I tried to mow with it before I cut the vent holes, it starting it started to smoke out the exhaust, which is an indicator that it was getting too hot. So as soon as it started putting out smoke, I dropped it to low idle, disengaged the blades, and parked it. And then that's when I, you know, did all this work to it. So yeah, it's a pretty good pretty pretty good mower now yeah the hood is barely warm it's a little bit warm but barely in fact it's it's the most warm where the vent holes are which is good because that means the hate the heat is coming out of that so obviously it's gonna be a little bit warm over here because i don't have any vent holes over here but it is on the heat escape to a pretty good extent, so. And we know that because it didn't smoke, literally, at all when I was mowing over here, so. It's a good mower. Good lawn tractor, good mower. Can't beat it.